We hear a lot about customer experience, but we don't hear about customer experience in the data center. And today on CXO Talk, that is our topic. I'm Michael Krigsman. I'm an industry analyst and the host of CXO Talk. I want to say a huge thank you to IPSoft. We are in their Innovation Experience Center in the heart of the financial district in New York City. And IPSoft is making CXO Talk possible. We're speaking with Kirk Skaugen, who is the president of the Lenovo Data Center Group. Hey, Kirk, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. So tell us about Lenovo and tell us about the Data Center Group. Sure. So Lenovo is a Fortune 226 company. We're in about 160 countries now. Uh, and uh, we have three main product lines. Obviously, I think we're probably both best known for our PC product line after acquiring the IBM PC business in about 2005. Uh, and we've recently purchased the uh, Motorola business uh, from Google as well as the server business from IBM. So three main product lines. Uh, and uh, a really global company. It's an enormous company. You have $45 billion in revenue. That's right, about 55,000 employees and, and $45 billion in revenue. So tell us about the data center group. Yeah, so I think uh, we've been growing as we've branched out and, and we have really two initiatives this year. One is to go from a single business to multi-business. Uh, well, again, with such a heritage in PC, now we're moving into data center and phones and, and beyond, smart speakers, uh, those kind of things. And then, uh, you know, I think moving from product-centric to customer-centric, which is really what we wanted to talk about today as a second initiative, because we have kind of a, a legacy of, of building product and driving it out to the customer base. Now we're kind of turning that upside down and being much, much more customer-centric uh, in, our, in our data center business. Uh, if, you, if you look at the data center business overall, uh, we're now uh, split out into multiple segments, each which have very unique uh, needs. I think for, for CIOs out there, very different PC market than say the gaming market or even the small business market. And the same thing's happening in the data center. Uh, we uh, have built a business unit completely focused on the, the hyperscalers that may buy a million servers at a time, uh, what's called the Super 7. We're now the largest supercomputing company in the world focused on those things that are doing everything from hurricane prediction to um, you know, cancer research. And then we also have business units focused on the move to software defined, uh, the IoT or Internet of Things generation, et cetera. So we're getting very uh, segmented even in the data center space. Kirk, when we think about customer experience and being customer centric, we tend to think about consumer products. When you talk about being customer centric as opposed to product centric, can you break that down for us? Sure. And I, I think what we're trying to do at Lenovo is, is get kind of into what we had referred to as amoeba management, which is each and every segment has very, very unique needs. The needs of a small business is very different than the needs of a core enterprise and, and a public cloud. So uh, each of the general managers has uh, the ability to control their own financial, uh, P&L, their workforce, uh, their sales force, and then ultimately their product roadmap. So for hyperscalers, they're looking for true customization, probably beyond anything we've seen before, mass customization where there's custom products for each one of those large uh, public cloud providers. If you look at supercomputing, they're really concerned about power. You're putting 6,000 computers to work on a big scientific problem. And uh, you know, again, very specific product lines and innovations we're doing around water cooling. Whereas a small business might be just looking for simplicity and simplification in how they manage because they don't have their own IT department. So uh, as we look at customer centricity, in the past we had maybe created one product line and just rolled it out. Now we're getting have, having to get much more specific uh, to each and every segment of the market, uh, most of which are growing very, very fast now. And the move from you know, people being the main connection and the main data point to the internet to the internet of things. So we're moving from a world where Lenovo was uh, participating in hundreds of millions of PC units to now we're going to be with 100 billion devices connecting not just people to people, but machine to machine as well. And the data center is obviously at the heart of all that. So you've organized the business around these smaller, more granular units. Is units even the right term to use? Uh, well, I think, you know, again, it's around the customer needs. So when we walk into, uh, you know, six of the top ten hyperscalers we now have design wins with, uh, again, they're looking for mass customization, power, security, 
uh, are, are, and, and cost. And so with Lenovo, we're building about four to five devices a second on the consumer and, and device side, and we can leverage that into, leverage that about $17 billion of procurement we do every year to make those hyperscalers, you know, be able to build out at mass scale. But again, a small business is really worried about how do I deploy my first server, connect my first 10 employees together, and not have to build an IT department to do that. So uh, we, we build these general managers in and the roadmap uh, taking into account those and, and, and putting together customer councils to be able to get their feedback before we even start the roadmap out in time. So there's a very close consultation with customers early in the product life cycle. That's true. I mean, we're here uh, in the middle of Manhattan in, in Wall Street, and that's a perfect example where Wall Street has traditionally pushed the envelope on the actual compute technology of moving from you know, CPUs to more purpose-built GPUs and FPGAs pushing the limits of their network and their storage subsystem. So I think Wall Street's a, a perfect example where we've had to get, you know, 18 months, two years, even three years ahead of the curve. What are the technology inflection points that are going to happen? And then how do we build products to take advantage of that? Where does technology innovation fit into this picture as well? Well, as I said before, I think innovation is everything. And, uh, you know, I think we have to be agile in the customer and we have to empower our engineers. So, you know, we, we pride ourselves on having some of the fastest innovation in the market, but we also realize we can't do it ourselves. Uh, part of our vision is to be the most trusted data center partner. That was when you, when you talk to people like Intel, NVIDIA, Broadcom, Microsoft, Red Hat, you know, as well as big software companies like SAP and others, Nutanix, uh, we aim to have the best partnerships as well. So rather than it be a win-lose, we're always talking win-win not only with our partners, but how do we deliver that with the customer base. So, you know, it's not uncommon when we're rolling out a new technology to do multiple thousand uh, customer visits over the course of a few months even uh, with our technology partners so that we don't have to do it all ourselves. So part of that customer centricity and trust is, is you know, making sure we don't think we have to do everything internal, don't, don't do everything proprietary. Uh, you know, I've been in the industry now, I joined in 1992, and there's one thing that's happened, it's this, the old data centers were these big proprietary uh, computers where the chip and the motherboard and the hardware and the operating system and the applications all came from one company. And for 25 years, whether it's workstations or servers or storage, now networking and telecom, everything's moving to a horizontal model with industry standard hardware, industry standard operating systems, industry standard applications. And that just means, my opinion, the people who partner best in that ecosystem are gonna be uh, the best have the best response to the customer without driving a lock-in for the customer. You know, one of the most interesting parts about this to me is when you acquired that uh, data center business from IBM, it was more or less a commodity kind of business. And you have been innovating and the results have, your, your growth results have proven out that you can take a commodity kind of business and innovate it around it. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, some, some analyst firms have us now as the fastest or near the fastest growing software defined company in the world. Um, we don't have the legacy of some of our networking and storage competitors. So as the world moves from you know, pure hardware to a what we call software defined data center with uh, more commodity differentiated building blocks and software applications on the top, we're very well positioned for that. So our goals are to double, triple, or even quadruple our market share in the transition from the traditional data center to the software defined data center. Um, but you're right, innovation's key, so you have to understand the customer. You can't just take off the shelf building blocks and slap them together. We, we need to start, in some cases, two years ahead of the product, sit down with the engineers and understand uh, the unique needs of their data center. Because again, as you're building scale, where people are buying 10,000, 100,000, even a million servers for their data center, that's something that was unfathomable probably 15 or 20 years ago. You need to know what's the uh, temperature that they're operating their data center in. What's their power requirements? Uh, you know, all these very unique attributes that are, that are sometimes custom, customer by customer. And then you have to have the ability to do massive customization, but still give them the economics. So we're trying to balance at Lenovo, taking advantage of being, I think, the fourth largest device company in the world between our tablets and PCs and phones and, and, and VR, AR devices, um, but be able to uh, meet the unique needs of the data center customer at the same time with, with 
that kind of value. And we just uh, met our goal of being the largest supercomputer company in the world, uh, about two years ahead of our goal. And people ask why we did that. Well, it, it is supply chain. It is the ability to, to architect the data center uh, at, at scale, all the way down to the node, all the way to the, the, the data center. But we've actually built vertical scientists that are experts in weather forecasting and modeling and genomics and, and these kind of things. So we can actually work with the customer on their applications and tuning their applications. So that's an example in supercomputing. If you look at uh, SAP, you know, SAP runs their internal HANA on Lenovo. So, so there, we actually have put uh, a couple dozen people at SAP's facility to optimize the hardware and the software together. Um, so we're, we're quite proud now that uh, about 90 plus uh, of the world record workloads are now running on Lenovo, which is far above our, our competitors. And people ask, how did we do that? Well, it's partnering better, and it's getting deeper relationships uh, with our customer base and, and the application vendors. So that's all kind of part of customer centricity. Uh, what we did to kind of put our money where our mouth was this year is we, we have now doubled, uh, once again for the second year in a row, the amount of compensation that a Lenovo employee will get based on customer centricity. So on-time delivery rates, quality rates, uh, quote times, all these kind of things. Uh, a person, every person at Lenovo has to have a customer-centric goal. Uh, and they can make up to 40% more of their annual kind of bonus if we hit the accelerated customer metrics. So the you know, Lenovo employees will win if and only if we deliver on our customer centricity goals. That's really interesting. So you have actual financial metrics in place for your employees that are tied to customer success. That's right, every single employee. And, and last year it had a range of 10 to 20%. This year it has a range of 20 to 40%. Um, not just a bonus on top, but actually the ability to be taken away if, if we can't meet our goals. So things like uh, we have a briefing center now at our corporate headquarters in, for the data center in Raleigh. Uh, when we leave, our net promoter score is about 71. So we're really encouraging customers to get in. You know, our challenge probably uh, continues to be our brand. You know, I think everyone knew IBM was in the server business. Not everyone knows Lenovo was in the, in the server and data center business. I think in the global 1000, we're growing you know, over 200% year on year because those were kind of legacy IBM customers that knew us very well. In the small market, they're just now starting to understand that, you know, yes, we make uh, ThinkPad notebooks, but we also make servers. So, that's part of what we're doing in terms of bringing people into our briefing center, doing interviews like this to, to get our brand uh, out there. What are the metrics that you're using to look at the data center group, at your business? Well, I think at the most basic level, right, uh, a year and a half ago we had uh, been shrinking a bit as we looked to retool our business. So we're looking at you know, basic, pretty, basic indicators. One is you know, our market segment share, which we're feeling is, is growing rapidly again. Again, our goal is to grow at least double the market. Um, we're obviously looking at revenue growth and for our shareholders, profit growth. So those are the three metrics. We look at that by segment, and then we look at it by geography. So each of our geography presidents from China to Asia Pacific, Latin America, we have a, have a view. But pretty, you know, from, a, from pure data center for Lenovo shareholders, we're looking at revenue, profit. Um, we look at it, attrition rates, obviously, to make sure we're keeping the best people, uh, which we think we are. Uh, in the industry, because at the end of the day, people, it's people first, like we said. Um, so, so those are the big ones, and, and I think in general, that's what our board is looking for. Right? It's just general performance. There's not 50 indicators. Of course, there's smaller indicators, but it's a it's a simple company from that perspective. From a technology indicator perspective, with each of our big partners, we're looking at what are the major technology trends they see coming, and then we want to be best and first. Um, so. How do we deliver the most optimized solution that's good for them, good for us, but most importantly, good for the customer base? So if we look at all the major hardware and software technology trends, we, we metric ourselves on being on the leading edge because we're not trying to protect that legacy heritage. We're not trying to keep a customer one more year on the old stuff. Uh, we're not trying to protect margin from the old stuff. Uh, we're trying to move people rapidly forward to the best technology for them. What are the implications of IoT on data centers and on your customers and also on especially what's what you're doing? Well, I think, you know, you traditionally had looked at maybe three to five server vendors, three to five networking vendors, three to five storage vendors. I think the industry is going to continue to consolidate. You know, if you look at the PC world, it's done the same thing. Lenovo now uh, 
owns 95% of NEC, 51% of Fujitsu in Japan, for example. So we've continued to consolidate through acquisition. I think you're going to end up with fewer larger companies. So you have to find a most trusted partner, most importantly, that's going to be with you for the next decade. These are turning into global markets, even with all the noise in the marketplace. I think you need to find someone that's most trusted and that can take you global. If you're in China, you need to find someone that can take you outside of China. If you're in the US, and you need to figure out a way to get into China and some of the emerging markets in Africa, Latin America, Eastern Europe, uh, Asia Pacific. Um, so for, for this transfer to IoT, it's going to need a step function reduction in, in price. You know, you're going to have to get way more performance at um, a much better price in order to deliver the scale that we're talking about here. Um, so, so what we're trying to do at Lenovo is just be that most trusted partner for the next decade uh, in this transformation. And finally, you're probably the best person to ask for advice for CIOs, for folks in the enterprise who are working with data centers, investing in data centers. What's the advice on how to get the most out of that data center investment? Well, I think find uh, the best set of partners, the partners you can trust. I and mean, this market's going so fast. You know, even for me who you know, works you know, seven days a week, 364 days a year, um, you know, it's very hard to keep up with the technology. So you need to find a trusted partner, a trusted sales resource uh, that'll help understand your unique requirements, build a partnership ecosystem that can keep you informed of the technology changes and help you make big bets. Why is the partner so important as opposed to, well, you know, let's get our engineers to look up the spec books and uh, we'll make a choice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the innovation is happening at such a global level now that, you know, unless you're in you know, 150, 160 countries, the innovation's coming everywhere, right? It's coming out of Israel, it's coming out of China, it's coming out of Egypt, it's coming out of Vietnam, it's, you know, it's, it's everywhere. So I think you need a global company to help build perspective, right? That doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that you know, your vendor or partner is bringing to you, but you need to have the aspects of, of us. You know, we have a, an incubator group that's out investing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in startup companies. We can bring those in to an IT manager and say, hey, here's what Lenovo thinks is interesting technology. And in a very quick kind of speed dating kind of uh, day, you can get access to 50, 60 companies that you don't have to go out and do research for yourself. And I think that's what a large global company like Lenovo can bring to you which is just consolidating a lot of research, um, you know, not just from our big partners, but from the investments that we're making and, and where we're betting the company. Great. Kirk Skaugen, thank you so much. Thank you. We've been talking with Kirk Skaugen, who is the EVP and president of the Lenovo Data Center Group. Subscribe on YouTube. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.